Turbo Overkill is a game I've been excited for since its release trailer. It's a boomer shooter cyberpunk experience where you get a chainsaw leg. What more do I need to say? Hey, Jarek here, and yeah, I'm a little bit late when it comes to Turbo Overkill, but that does mean I get a chance to play it after they patched it, rather than just playing it on day one. As of right now, it's in early access, so not all of the content is there. However, it did take me around four hours to beat, so there's a pretty sizable chunk. What I can say is that my excitement kind of started to wane. There's a lot of good about this game, but I also have a lot of complaints. It didn't exactly live up to my expectations. Let's start with the good. The PC release is fantastic. All of the options you would expect in a PC release are here, even the options you wouldn't expect. Like there is an FOV slider and a weapon FOV slider. Thank God, I love it when games do this. There is no bigger pet peeve for me when you can change your FOV and then the weapon FOV doesn't scale with that new FOV. So instead, it just looks like the gun is crammed straight up in your face. Far Cry is the biggest offender. The later games thankfully tackled that issue, but my god, playing Far Cry 3 without a mod to change the weapon FOV is just miserable. So yeah, in Turbo Overkill, that's not an issue, which is extra important because it's such a fast game. I also didn't have any framer issues or any crashing issues. Graphically, this game is awesome. It's a mix of old and new. It's obviously a full 3D game. However, there is occasionally some textures to make it look a little old school, but then there's also a lot of stuff that makes it look new school and modern. So its base is very polished, but the thing you most likely have already noticed is that the aesthetic is beautiful. This is that sort of cyberpunk Blade Runner Blood Dragon style look, and I love this look. I have a huge soft spot for this. It's like someone went to a laser tag game in the 70s and said, yep, that's the future. My chat also started calling this Neo Alexandria, which I thought was funny. There is just so much detail in this city and even little things had me laughing all the time. Did I just see a sign saying, bruh, hold up, where? Bruh. <laughs> you, you indeed did. What does it say below that? Bruh, the musical. <laughs> Why did I only just now see that? My eyes just focused on the giant bruh. And I just, I blocked out everything else. Like, I just can't stop stopping and like, looking at all the skyboxes. Bruh. <laughs> and on a relevant note, the music is awesome. It's a sort of synth wave, but still has this energy behind it. It fits the style of game perfectly. But I really wanted to point out that it's not just the art style carrying this game. It runs on a newer version of the Unreal Engine and overall is a fantastic PC release. As you would expect from an early access release, the whole story is not there, but there's more than most other early access releases and by that I mean there's something. I was actually really surprised by this. The voice acting is AAA quality. It's quite good. Your kind is now corrupted by disease. You need augmentation to live, to evolve, to survive. There is no way you can run without sin. There is an established cast of characters. The Too Long Didn't Read is that there is a rogue AI called Sin trying to take over this futuristic city and you need to stop it. I could go into more detail because the way it plays out is a lot more interesting than that, but also there's not much more to talk about because again, early access, the game isn't done. As for how the game actually plays, what you'll probably notice right away is the movement. You have full access right at the beginning of the game. Pressing control will make you slide, except for you're sliding with your chainsaw leg at Mach 10, and you still have a traditional boost, just like in other retro shooters. You get two and they're on a short recharge. This means you can go absolutely bonkers with this movement. And this is base movement. You can get upgrades to make you move even faster. It's like bunny hopping, but faster, and you don't need skill to do it. That's not a negative thing. Anyone can span this movement and play as fast as they want. The game is a lot of fun this way. You'll also very quickly get these magnetic boosts which allow you to wall run on certain surfaces. This is intuitive not just because it does it the same way other games do, run next to a wall and you'll wall run, but also because you get a lot of air control. Platforming in this game was something that I actively wanted to do. Aside from a few exceptions I'll talk about later, it was clear where I needed to go. 
It wasn't frustrating or annoying, it was naturally woven into the game. And by that I mean this movement is something you were going to be doing whether you're in combat or not. Hell, they even managed to do the unthinkable. They made ladders work intuitively in first person shooters without a problem. These devs must be rocket scientists. Okay, so what about the combat? Well, it's in the same sort of genre as say Doom Eternal or Ultra Kill, except I don't think it's as good. It's not necessarily bad, those are just like really high bars to reach, so I don't want people thinking that you're getting the next Doom Eternal by buying this game. Anyway, let's talk about the weapons. They have pretty good synergy with each other. On top of that, you can quick swap weapons, so finding good combinations is going to feel natural, intuitive, and make your life so much easier. Every weapon also has a split function you can purchase through these shops. For example, the split function you can buy for the default pump action shotgun will allow you to over pump the shotgun up to three times to charge an electric explosive. If this doesn't kill the enemy you hit, this will stun them. For the double barrel, the split function fires bouncing grenades that are also sticky grenades. The split function for the chain gun is a flamethrower, which is just fun. While there is only six weapons in the game, these split functions effectively double the options you have. And then on top of that, you have your chainsaw leg, and you can use micro missiles. Micro missiles can be fired at any time and are on a recharge. They will lock onto enemies and take out an entire group. On top of this, you have further upgrades you can buy. These upgrades are split onto your different limbs. Some of them are upgrades for say your chainsaw leg. For example, the ability to get a little bit of health back when you chainsaw an enemy. Or maybe you can get an upgrade for your arm that will turn your micro missiles into a cluster bomb after it initially blows up. This stuff helps a lot and adds a little bit of player expression to the way you would usually play. The enemies, are pretty dumb. They sort of just run straight at you, but that's what you would expect from a 90s retro shooter. However, this is where I'm going to start complaining. I have a lot of negatives to say about this game. They're not damning things. I actually think these are things they can address, patch out, and then we can have a very good game. The first thing I really want to address is the difficulty. When I jump into a game, I typically play on normal first because I want to see the average experience that I feel most people will probably play. And then I play hard mode after that, or whatever mode is the proper challenge for me. However, I've noticed the way they balance this difficulty is that since the enemies are so dumb and kind of just run straight at you, they just have them do a ton of damage. What makes this issue worse is that this game does not really do a good job telling you when you're taking damage. Like obviously, yes, you have your health bar in the bottom left, but in the middle of a frantic gunfight, you're not really looking at it and then you just kind of suddenly die. That is assuming the enemies didn't just one shot you out of nowhere anyway. All right, it's just a rocket launcher. What? How? Yeah, it's one of those games where it doesn't necessarily feel like a fair challenge rather than artificial difficulty. I can't tell you the amount of times I just got blindsided and just seemingly died from nothing. Remember how I said you can get your health back by chainsawing enemies? Well, when you kill an enemy with a chainsaw, that only gives you six health back. It's not quite as useful as, say, Doom Eternal. You don't really have that resource management aspect. It's kind of there, but it's so minimal that it doesn't help much. Especially since you're really not going to be doing that to the heavier enemies, just cannon fodder. And even they can do a ton of damage to you real quick. To make things clear, I am not complaining about the fact that the game can be difficult. I want a game like this to be difficult. That's why I like Doom Eternal so much. And Ultra Kill. Ultra Kill isn't an easy game either, but I had a ton of fun with it. The problem is, this is a type of difficulty that doesn't feel fair to the player. It's a type of difficulty that doesn't make me want to approach it and take this challenge head on. It's a type of difficulty that makes me say, what the fuck, that was bullshit, why did I die? Admittingly, I didn't experience much of this until like the last 20% of the game, mostly the last level. It generally feels like that last level was really not polished well. And that's a shame because this is one of the train levels. These are usually a lot of fun in a shooter. Generally, it gives you a direction to go and a bunch of enemies and you just gotta fight your way through them and that's always fun. However, in this case, it doesn't play out that way. Now, don't let the aesthetics fool you. This level looks beautiful and the idea is awesome but the execution isn't so good. Remember how positive I was about the platforming and how much fun I was having? Yeah, we'll throw that all out the window for this last level. It is not made clear at all where you're supposed to go throughout many parts of this level. Say this part here, I jumped around for a while trying to figure out how the hell I'm supposed to clear that gap because I clearly can't get on top of that van just for someone in my chat to eventually point out hey, there's a wall you can run on on the side of the van. I would have never seen that. To make things worse, there are so many parts of this level that you can walk on that will just lead you to a kill barrier. Say for example here, going up this ramp, that clearly looks like the direction I need to go, but it's not, and the game just kills me to tell me that this is not the way you're supposed to go. Unfortunately, the combat on this level isn't any more fun. You have very little room to move, 
How am I supposed to dodge any of this? You're just going to die over and over here. It doesn't matter if you take a head on and try to chainsaw all of them, doesn't matter if you use micro missiles, you're just going to end up dying numerous times. There is no way to avoid taking damage. It's going to happen. And this isn't really a complaint, it's more a thing that happened, but this happened? Tells me there has to be one nearby. Somewhere. Uh oh, uh oh, I can't stop. I I think I have <laughs> what? I died out of that somehow. How did I die? And that's without discussing the final boss, which apparently has been nerfed, but still felt like bullshit to me. This boss can do a ton of damage to you as you would expect, but then there's also the regular enemies that can do a bunch of damage to you running around. And on the second phase of this boss, the ground is effectively lava. It's just a bunch of lasers, so you can't land on it, so you're adding the extra platforming on top of it. To be fair, almost every time I died while playing against this boss was because the boost pad just didn't work. This is because if you're going out of your boost and land onto the jump pad, it doesn't activate which is stupid as hell. I died way too many times because of this. And then there's all the little things about this boss, like say the green lasers are moving so fast that the only way to avoid them is just to jump over them, and that is not made clear at all. I don't even think it's intended to work that way. So yeah, my final opinions on this game are very mixed, and I'm conflicted with how I feel. On one hand, the game looks awesome. The music is awesome. I love the aesthetic. The weapons have good synergy with each other, although I do think the weapons sound a little too weak. This double barrel shotgun is supposed to be a massive damage dealing cannon, but it sounds like this. Yeah, the reload doesn't even sound good on that thing, and I could say that about all the weapons in the game. They sound a little too weak. I think the sound effects need to be better. But again, the synergy between the weapons is great. As far as the game actually plays, these weapons are awesome. Movement and platforming feels intuitive. Anyone can pick that up and understand what they're doing. The base for this level, and I would say the first like 75% of it, is a lot of fun. However, the more I played it, the more I was getting annoyed at all these little nagging issues that just eventually had me not having any fun at all. By the time I was playing that last level, I had totally soured of the game. I just wasn't enjoying myself. At the head of all those issues was just the way they balanced this difficulty. Again, I don't have a problem with a difficult game, but I do have a problem with artificial difficulty. Enemies are dumb, so your attempt to fix that is just have them do a bunch of damage to you, which just kind of feels like you're getting cheap shotted out of nowhere. The good news is, is that the base of this game is awesome, and everything I've complained about is stuff that can easily be fixed in a patch. You may watch this review in a year and go, what are you talking about, you idiot? Just get good. But maybe that's not what the problem was. Maybe that's just how it was when I was playing it, and then they addressed those issues. So is this game worth your money? Yes and no at the same time. I would tell you wait until it goes on sale. But as for now, that should be everything I wanted to say about Turbo Overkill. Huge thanks goes to everyone that joined me while I stream this game over to Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jared4gamedragon. You can click it in the bottom right. If you subscribe to my Twitch, including Prime, you get to see my videos at least one week ahead of time. I do want to give back to people that subscribe to me on Twitch. And of course, a huge thanks goes to you for watching this video.